demand your MTV. I want my MTV. I want my MTV. I want my MTV. MTV Music Television. Video music. 24 hours a day. The company launched in small towns and suburbs, focusing on rock music and white viewers. MTV's refusal to play country music saw country singles permanently pushed out of the top 100. By 1984, MTV reached a quarter of daily teen viewers, and the station would rarely play black artists until CBS threatened to pull all of its white artist videos from the channel, ultimately forcing MTV to play Michael Jackson's Thriller. Black culture thusly became a central component of the lives of many white teenagers, even if they didn't know any black people in real life. The addition of Yo! MTV Raps in 1988 meant youth of all races getting acquainted with conscious and gangster rap like the work of Public Enemy and N.W.A. Due to a new crop of women in the workforce and single mothers, many a youth were latchkey kids, free to spend their afternoons as they pleased, and there was a wealth of media to choose from. The aforementioned MTV meant popular bands and artists like Duran Duran, Pat Benatar, Rod Stewart, Paula Abdul and Devo. Dance trends that originated on the streets, like the moonwalk, break dancing, and the running man, became popular through artists in music videos and at award shows. When music got boring, there were fun new shows like Jim, which featured a singer slash music executive with amazing hair and fashions. There was Full House, The Ghostbusters, G.I. Joe, Inspector Gadget, a pup named Scooby-Doo, and Reading Rainbow. Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book, a Reading Rainbow. There were cheesy game shows too, like Double Dare. Every weekday, Nickelodeon gives kids the physical challenges they want on Double Dare. Flying Zucchini Brothers, William Tell, Rain on Your Parade, Weatherman, Top Gum, Scrambled Egg, and more. The Physical Challenge, another reason to watch Double Dare every weekday on Nickelodeon. The sketch show You Can't Do That on TV was shipped in from Canada and featured the first of the infamous slime gag. Pee Wee's Playhouse, a variety show for kids, also became a hit with stoners. Meanwhile, at the movie theaters, there were a slew of classics, my favorite being The Goonies. How's that? How's that? Oh, you idiot! You put it on upside down! Sure. If God meant to do it that way, you'd all be pissing in your faces. Fine to me. A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Transformers, Risky Business, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Fame, Teen Wolf, Labyrinth, Back to the Future, Sixteen Candles, Pretty in Pink, The Breakfast Club, Never Ending Story, Batman, Beetlejuice, and other movies were popular. Did I get all of them? Of course I didn't. Come on, commenters, let me know what I'm missing in the comments. I know you will. Wait! Wait! And I can't go without mentioning two of the biggest movies of the decade, so don't drag me. Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. The first camper arrived at the Cinerama on University Avenue shortly after noon on Tuesday. By nine at night, the line encompassed several dozen people. The all-night vigil ends Wednesday morning at 11, when these people finally get to buy tickets to the first showing of The Empire Strikes Back. Do you think this is going to be as big as Star Wars? Bigger! Yeah, bigger, bigger, bigger. Yeah. What time is the final? 10.30. They don't start selling tickets till 11. He's here. He's my. Sure. Our, we'll have That's one morning. If he's going to buy your ticket, why are you sitting here all night? Because I wouldn't buy his ticket if we sit here all night. <laughs> Teen and young adult movie attendance peaked in 1985 when the typical teen reported he saw an average of 15 movies per year. This changed dramatically after the 1985 debut of Blockbuster and other movie rental stores. VHS had beaten the pricier Betamax to be the chosen videotape format and weekend movie rentals would become all the wave at the Texas-based store. I'll watch these fast and have them back tomorrow, I promise. Relax, at Blockbuster you can keep your videos for three evenings, so take home plenty and, and use our 24-hour quick drop. Do you have any children's videos? Sure. 
Walmart. Blockbuster's America's family video store. You know, we have more kids' videos than any place else. Blockbuster distributed movie catalogs to really capitalize on their audience and emphasize that it was a family place because it didn't allow dirty back rooms for porn seekers. In addition to young adult movies and TV, there was a thriving children and young adult literature genre. The 80s was the dawn of the magic school bus, horror and thriller novels by Christopher Pike, and R.L. Stein's Fear Street series. Young adult fiction had grown to include more serious topics, as well as exploring the territory of female imagination. Books like the Sweet Valley High series, The Babysitter's Club, Slam Book, and a bunch of other titles for Scholastic, who sent out order forms to schools and dominated school book fairs. A 1984 article described the lucrative and unfolding industry of school book fairs, but questioned the literature available to children. It said, some critics contend that book fairs give too much leeway to children in the choice of books. One librarian disagreed, saying, children should have some direction, but they get so much direction from teachers, librarians, and parents that it's good for them to be able to develop their own taste once in a while. Children also had growing choice when it came to toys, which were often at the center of nightmarish consumerist crazes and marketing schemes like the 1983 debut of Cabbage Patch Kids. And these little ugly ass dolls came with adoption papers and you got to name them, so it was really fancy. <laughs> Welcome to another holiday shopping season. When the doors opened at this Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania store, the pushing and shoving began. One woman was knocked to the floor and suffered a broken leg. This scene has been repeated in hundreds of stores across the country that advertise the Cabbage Patch Kids. The Cabbage Patch Kids are dolls about 16 inches high. They don't walk, talk, wet their pants, or grow hair. They don't do much of anything. But they have upset the supply and demand cycle to an astonishing degree. There has never been such a first year demand for a new doll. As far as I'm concerned, they're the worst looking things I've ever seen. I mean, they are pathetic looking, they're homely. I agree, sir. I agree! And Cabbage Patch Kids weren't the only toys causing manias. Teddy Ruxpin, a teddy bear with a cassette player in his back and moving eyes and mouth, was a nationwide sensation at $50 to $70 a pop. Battery is not included. Hi, my name is Teddy Ruxpin. Can you and I be friends? There were Care Bears who got their own TV show and waffles, Teenage Mutant Turtles who started out in a comic and became TV stars, and My Little Pony which eventually got a TV show and tons of accompanying merchandise. Ronald Reagan had deregulated marketing, allowing companies to advertise to children as much as they wanted, despite expert testimony and data showing that young children can't distinguish between ads and reality. There was a 300% increase in cartoons that had licensed characters, and many popular educational shows of the 70s, like Schoolhouse Rock and Kids Are People 2, were cut. Toy companies, card companies, comic publishers, and television networks were making a killing on horizontal integration, with characters like Rainbow Bright, Strawberry Shortcake, G.I. Joe, Masters of the Universe, Smurfs, and more dominating the markets. G.I. Joe specifically introduced characters for the purpose of marketing new toys shortly after. Star Wars merchandise was also a hot commodity. Cereal and junk food companies would also make a killing off of many of these licensed characters. Other popular toys of the 80s included Rubik's Cube, Light Bright Magic Screens, Polly Pockets, Fashion Plates, Power Wheels, and Monster in My Pocket figurines. Children of the 80s, how many of these toys, books, movies, songs, and shows am I missing? Come on, come on and tell me. I know y'all will. Let me know in the comments. So the youth had all that. But you know what else they had? Video games. Teen girls were stereotyped as being unsuitable for video games unless it was Pac-Man, which was an international phenomenon. This is the current craze game, Pac-Man. I like the little man. He's the only, he eats up all the other things, you know. How about that Pac-Man song that I hear around here all the time? Yeah, you sing it, you sing it a lot, you hum it. <laughs> Indeed, and play it on the jukebox at full volume. Wrote Time in a 1982 profile of video games' global dominance. The reasons are that male arcade players tend to outnumber females by about 20 to 1, and that women, especially if they are wives, generally resent the games and quite often regard them with outright loathing. The most temperate analyst is likely to mention that most women are not conditioned as children to be comfortable with complicated gadgets or to play shooting games. Girl, they ain't know me, honey, because I be shooting them left and right. I be pop, pop. Time 
estimated that $1 billion was spent on video game consoles a year, an amount that would only rise with the arrival of consoles like the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1985 and Sega Genesis in 1988.